Welcome to the Wooly World of West Knits, episode seven. Happy New Year. We've got a lot of new energy. We're very excited. We're very excited for treats. And we had a really relaxing holiday, just like knitting a lot. So we are really ready to dive into some new videos and patterns for you this year. So I'm gonna share some projects uh, that I'm working on and some of my favorite patterns from last year and give you an idea and some sneak peeks of what to expect for 2023. So feel free to grab some knitting and uh, drink and just knit along and enjoy some inspiration with me and the pups. Well, one pup, Rioche ran away, but you're still looking for treats. So let's dive into some of my favorite projects from last year. It was a really busy packed year in 2022. I released 44 patterns I just counted and that's like almost one a week. I don't know how that happened. But how I usually like design a ton in like a couple weeks and then I work on them and then get them finished in like batches and then they get released later. But still, that's a lot. There's gonna be about that many this year too, I think. And some of you have like knit a lot of them or most of them. So you don't have to knit all the patterns, but like pick your favorites. But I'm surprised some of you are really, really voracious and speedy knitters. So there's gonna be some really fun new sweaters and shawls uh, towards the beginning of this year, coming out soon. But last year, I think a couple of my favorite projects were some of the bigger projects, like sweaters and blankets. I released like four or five blankets last year, and I think my favorite, favorite project from last year was this jigsaw puzzle blanket, because it's one, oh, what you looking for? Oh, you found the treat stash. Hey, come here. I think the jigsaw blanket's my favorite. Mm. And it's her favorite too. She likes sleeping on it because it's like so soft with all the Surrey alpaca. And I just, yeah, use this one the most because it's pretty big, but it's not massive. It's kind of more of a throw size. So it's more of a little lap blanket. And I just love all the colors and soft, fluffy fibers I used for this one. Hey, what you looking for? Okay, there's a couple more, a couple more. Come on, get down from there. And uh, yeah, I used all this like Surrey alpaca and the process of knitting it was just as fun as me enjoying it when it was finished. You've just got so much energy. Oh, come up here, come up here, you too. So I think that's my favorite blanket and I'm gonna do some more modular projects. I've been working on a modular shawl. So if you really like this kind of puzzle piece type of knitting where you're knitting a chunk at a time and attaching the sections, I'm working on another shawl with this construction method that's coming out in February, so. There's gonna be a lot more cool color blocked designs coming this year. But Jigsaw Puzzle Blanket, I think, yeah, this is, I think this is my number one favorite from 2022. Yeah, I really love, love using this one. I think my favorite shawl from last year are, is the Aurora Cabin, which a lot of you are knitting on right now. So the Hybrid Knit Along just started on December 26th. So we're gonna officially knit along throughout the whole month of January. And on February 1st, I'm going to uh, give out some surprise prizes to some random winners. So if you share your progress of the Aurora Cabin Shawl with hashtag HCAL2022 or hashtag Aurora Cabin Shawl, I'll be picking some winners from those on Instagram. And I'll be picking some winners if you just post any of your progress of this shawl in the Ravelry group. So I'll link to the Ravelry group down below. So if you wanna add your progress of this shawl, even if you don't finish, just add pictures of your colors and your progress as you're knitting throughout January. And on February 1st, I'll pick some pattern and yarn prize winners. And we'll have some fun knitting along in January. There's already some people that have gotten to this slip stitch section. And that's my favorite bit of this shawl with the five colors mixing together. And there's some really cool color combinations to check out. And that's always my favorite part about these knit alongs is seeing what colors you choose and I'm getting different color ideas, seeing combinations that I never would have thought to put together. So that's what I love about these multicolor five color shawls. It's totally different. Even if you use the same colors, but in a different color arrangement, it looks like a different shawl. So I'm getting really inspired by your neutral versions, your ColourPop versions. And yeah, throughout January, We'll knit this big shawl. And I think, yeah, this was the last shawl I released. Was it? I think so. Last shawl I released last year. And I think it was my favorite. I saved the best for last. So much fun. And I think you're gonna see a little bit more of this stitch pattern 
coming in another type of design later. Maybe here, we'll see. So later this year, I'm gonna play a little bit more with that stitch pattern for you. So maybe you can have a matching sweater or something to your shawl. How does that sound? So that's my favorite shawl, got my favorite blanket. My favorite sweater is the one I'm wearing. We did the Dustlin sweater. This is another stitch family with all these simple solid textures. And I wanna play more with this texture as well. I think a cardigan or jacket drapey thing would be really fun with these textures. But I love knitting this simple textured uh, pullover because it was you know, more relaxing. I find that the more I knit, I fall into these categories of knitting. Do you feel the same that like you have different cravings for if you want something more simple, then you'll just work with one color. If you want something kind of quick, you don't have to focus on as much. You have your portable socks to work on. So I feel like I'm just adding to the categories of knitting how you're feeling. And sometimes that's really mindless. Or sometimes you need that excitement in your knitting with like all the colors and con different construction details. So I feel like I'm expanding those categories for myself. And I've got my solid sweaters now. I haven't made a solid sweater in a really long time, but last year I made a couple solid sweaters. So I do like how mindless those are. And I've got my exciting modular marled for all those stash busty colors. And then the sock category is a new one that I'm gonna keep going with this year. I've, I made, I think it was towards the end of last year, like in the end of summer and fall, I got really into socks and I've just been nonstop making socks uh, since then because I find that they're really good in-between projects. So I can just cast one on and always have it on the go so that when I'm getting tired of a pattern or when I finish a bigger project, I have something already to keep my fingers busy because the worst knitting feeling for me besides knitting a sweater that doesn't fit or felting a sweater which still happens besides like ruining a project that you've worked on. The worst feeling for me is finishing a project and you have that like sadness of you loved working on it and now it's done. And usually for me, there's like this gap of like two or three days where I try to cast on things or I'm working on things and I just like hate everything that I start. I think because I'm trying to like force something to be just as good and exciting as that last project. So maybe that's one of my goals for this year is to just allow that time to happen, not to force it not to be there, but whenever you finish that really fun project, just allow yourself to, you know, it's okay if you're not super inspired for a few days or you're not loving your knitting for a little bit in between those big projects, but to maybe like take a break or to always have that sock that you don't have to focus on, you don't have to think about, you can just pick it up and go and then let that next project come to you rather than force it. Because, yeah, sometimes when you force a project to happen or you force yourself to work with certain types of colors or something, you just end up not loving that project and you waste time working on it. So I'm just going to let that space happen between those big, exciting projects and just allow the next one to come rather than force it to come. That sounds like a good 2023, not a goal, but just a let it be type of mentality with your knitting. Stitchy. What are you thinking? She, you're not in the let it be mentality. She's in the give me more treats mentality. So those are my favorites. I got my blanket, shawl, sweater, and then socks. This year is gonna be the year of socks for me. I spent all fall and winter designing sock after sock after sock, knitting socks, coming up with different stitch patterns, and recycling some of my shawl and sweater stitches into matching socks. So the West Knits Year of Socks is the name of the ebook. So I put all these together in a collection for you. We'll have 13 patterns. So there's already the West Knits Year of Socks 2023. I'll link to it down below. You can get that ebook on Ravelry and westknits.com and you'll already get the painting brick socks. So this was the first early sock that I put out in December. So you can use one main color and lots of mini skeins or leftovers for the contrast pops for the painting brick socks. And this sock I did a folded hem. That's really comfortable. It's my favorite cuff for socks. It takes twice as long to knit because you're making the cuff twice as long and then folding it for this reversible, but it feels so nice. So if you know you have enough yarn and you love the colors and you're loving, excited to knit the socks, just knit a longer cuff 
fold it over, and you're gonna be so happy with how that stretchy cuff feels. If you don't want that, just knit a regular cuff and do like a German twisted cast on, and then just, yeah, knit a regular cuff and that's fine. But try the hem because I'm so happy with wearing these. They're really comfortable around the leg. So this is the first sock, and then the January sock is this cabled trellis sock. This was the hybrid knit along from a couple years ago. So I used this traveling cabled slip stitch. You're only working with one color at a time and you're slipping and cabling. And I used a self-striping marled yarn from Spin Cycle for, I used one skein of that Spin Cycle yarn and one skein of La Bienne May. Shopovola Zauberball Crazy would be a really good yarn or any other like gradient self-striping or a variegated colorway would be really cool for that contrast color because you just see it a little bit in those garter ridges and the main color is what you see the most of. So what I like about all these color work socks for me is I have a big foot and sometimes if I knit a pair of socks with just one skein, sometimes I run out if I knit my leg like as high as I want. So if I, in knitting with one color, I have to knit my leg a little bit shorter so that I have enough yarn to knit both socks. If you're like a tiny foot sock knitter and you could knit like four socks with a skein of yarn, good for you, you can knit more socks, but that's not my world. So I often need to like combine colors and that stretches out my full skein that I love. And I know I always have enough if I have one main color and it's used for about half of the sock and then that contrast color is used for the rest. So this is gonna be a really fun one to see what color combos you put together. And I just embraced the yarn changes and let them do their thing. So they're not matchy matchy colors. And I really like that. You can have one color be your right, right sock and one could be your left. But these are really fun for winter. They're a bit more thick and dense and really cozy with that slip stitch cable. And I just love the structure that gives. They're like really solid socks, a little bit less drapey, like stockinette or garter stitch socks. They have this really beautiful, a little bit more firm structure. And I love how they feel and hug the foot. So my trick for making all these socks, these are the first two in the West Knits Year of Socks ebook. My trick for making them is I always select a size that's smaller than my actual foot. And that's a key for helping them fit nicely. You want a nice snug fit because the more you wear a sock, if you, if you make a sock that's like nine inches circumference and your foot is also nine inches circumference, it's gonna stretch out a little bit over time and it's gonna, gonna become a sloppy sock. And I've knit some of those and they just feel, ugh, these limp so sloppy socks on your foot. It doesn't feel nice. You want it to like <clears throat> hug the foot and keep it really cozy and yeah, cozy and warm. And it's gonna stretch out a little over time. So I always knit a sock that's at least one inch, sometimes even like one and a half or two inches, which is two and a half centimeters to four centimeters smaller than my actual foot, okay? So measure your foot if you're like, oh, my foot is eight inches. It's like 20 centimeters or whatever. Then knit a sock that's 18 centimeters or like seven inches or something. So yeah. Basically choose a size sock that's smaller than your actual foot. So it's <laughs> hugging it. So I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of some of the socks coming this year. So every single month in 2023, we're gonna do releases at the beginning of the month for socks. And there'll be still my shawls and sweaters coming out later, later in the months. But at the beginning of each month, we're gonna start with a new sock and you'll get 13 socks in the ebook and some of them will be more slip stitches to match your shawls, some solid, really simple socks. I'm just giving you little sneak peeks to whet your appetite and some new stitch patterns that I've been developing. So there'll be a lot of fun color work socks, but some really simple patterns as well. So if you've never knit socks before, I do all of these top down. You'll get all these top down seamless socks and most of them have a, they all have these uh, heel flaps constructions not the little short row, not an afterthought heel. I do the heel flaps with the little heel turn. And uh, if you haven't knit socks, I'm gonna do a sock workshop for you. I just finished filming it. Brioche, what, is the sock workshop exciting? Do I need to knit you socks? 
you would eat them off. You'd probably tolerate them. Stitch would eat them off of your feet. But if you've never knit socks, we just finished a film in a workshop and I'll show you every step of the way how to knit a really simple DK weight sock or a fingering weight sock. And I'll include some recipes, some simple sock recipes for fingering weight sock yarn and a DK weight recipe for that workshop. So that's coming later in January. So you can look forward to that tutorial. So if you've never done socks, I'd sign up for that workshop and you can just do exactly what I do. I knit a whole sock with you and you can learn all my color tricks, my heel tricks, the toe tricks, how to fit and design, or not design, but how to fit and do your gauge for the socks. So yeah, that's what we're doing at the beginning of this month. We're gonna start really simple, learn how to knit socks at the beginning of the year, and then develop our skills and take it from there. So one thing that I was really happy with last year was getting to like document all my kind of color and technique ideas into more workshop types. So I would love to hear if you've taken any of those workshops or if you've seen some of them and you haven't seen something you're interested in, I'd love to hear what types of workshops you'd love to watch or you'd love to take. So I, I film all of these at forwestknits.com and I've done color workshops. There's a design your own shawl workshop. We've learned brioche, modular knitting, stash busting we did at the end of last year. We're doing socks, learning how to knit socks. What else am I missing? What would you like to learn? Do you want to learn like more types of shawl design? More about sweaters? What else? Do you want to like knit dog sweaters with me in a workshop or something? I don't know, is there any other technique? So let me know in the comments down below what kind of workshops. Uh, they'll all be online workshops. So which ones, what do you want to see me teach? Maybe there's something I even haven't done and I could learn something and then teach you what I've learned. And yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun year of learning. So I hope you'll stick around and uh, enjoy those upcoming workshops. Well, that's what's going on in my world this year. We're starting really simple and cozy, making our socks. There's some sweaters and some shawls I wanna make this year for sure, but I'm gonna take it easy and just kind of let the ideas come to me. And maybe there'll be some exciting new stitches I haven't tried. So whatever I learn and get inspired by this year, I'll definitely share it with you. There's a lot of patterns, a lot of new sweaters and cardigans I wanna make. And we're gonna do all of our knit alongs this year. So if you've done the knit alongs from last year or you saw them happening and you're like, maybe I wanna try that. We're gonna do our yarn along again this summer, our yarn and pattern club. We'll do our mystery knit along in the fall, another hybrid knit along in the winter. So there's gonna be a lot of epic shawls coming this year. So anything that's new happening in all those knit alongs, I always announce in my West Knits newsletter. So you can sign up for that at westknits.com and we send a monthly newsletter. So anything new and exciting like knit alongs and workshops, you'll be the first to hear about through those newsletters. And the last thing I wanted to share is I'm working on some donations. I'm putting together a knit pile, some hats and scarves that I'm donating to Knit the Rainbow. And I'm gonna share the link to this website, knittherainbow.org down below. It's an organization based in New York and they donate a lot of winter garments and accessories to houseless LGBTQIA plus youth, mostly in the New York City area. But they're accepting donations and I'll put their link down below because they have drop-off centers and you can donate hats that you've already made or you could make new hats and scarves and there's still lots of winter months ahead this year. So all those uh, knit or crochet donations will be distributed to houseless youth uh, mostly in New York City area, but they're working on some other cities as well. And they're also working on a lot of programming. Stitch, come here. They're working on a lot of programming for teaching, like knitting workshops and stuff to those youth. So check out their website. It's a really good cause and it's something really small that we can do um, by donating. There's an address. I'll include a link to the address where you can donate or send a box of knitted and crocheted goods to. And it's... Yeah, something really small we can do, but it's gonna have a really big difference in a lot of kids' lives. So check out that link, and uh, if you're unable to donate any items or to donate any money to this group, then spread the word, and if you have a knitting group, maybe you could get a few friends together and each of you get a little scarf or a blanket or a sweater. Hats are re always really great. Get a little box together and ship it on over. 
So I'll put that link down below, knittherainbow.org. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll join me in uh, spreading the word about this and donating to them. So thanks for watching. We're gonna do more of these Wooly Worlds of West Knits this year. And we're gonna watch the pups grow. We're gonna watch our sweater closets, our sock drawers grow this year. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff coming. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. And in the meantime, there's gonna be some knitting tutorials and stuff I'm gonna to share too. So thank you so much for joining my little YouTube world and I'll see you later. Bye. I'm gonna say bye brioche. I'm gonna wake up. Everybody's here for you, you know that? Yeah, bye. <laughs>